10 years ago, I was working in Ghana, working on a study on cataract surgery. In the region where I was working, maybe six or seven hours away from Accra, there were only two ophthalmologists. They were working in their hospital, but 90% of the needs, 90% of the surgeries had to be done in the 20 other district hospitals. So they have to move around to do the surgery. Unfortunately, only one of them could do it at a time. And do you know why? Only one car was available to drive him around and to cover the 20 district hospitals. One day, the senior surgeon became very, very, very sick. So sick that it was impossible for him to travel or work for the next two or three years. All the surgeries stopped from one day to another, and the waiting list increased and increased. I paid him a visit. He had become a very good friend of mine. And I discovered, by surprise, that the car, that the hospital car, was still parked in his garage and was used by his wife to do the shopping or to drop the kids. I was shocked knowing that all these patients were waiting to get access to healthcare. How did that happen? Why did the regional director not make the decision to reallocate the car to the second ophthalmologist? It's obvious, simple. This did not happen. From that day, I understood that if we want to improve people's health, we need to understand how people make decisions. Today, we're going to talk about three elements. Information, decisions, and social networks. But we need to change the way we think about health systems. We need to be able to understand the complexity of health systems. So that's the first question for us. What is complexity? Complexity is not being complicated. It's not about being complicated. And I will give you two examples. The first one is from an old French recipe to bake bread. I'm from a family of bakers, but it took me 15 years to find the right recipe and master all the techniques. But if I give to each of you my secrets and my recipe, you will all come back with the same nice and tasty bread. Baking bread was, for me, complicated, but it is not complex. It is not complex because we can analyze, identify all the factors affecting the baking of bread. I know all of them, and I can control of them. Ingredients, quantities, temperature of the room, temperature of the water. These factors are not going to change. They are constant variables. They will be the same in two years, in 10 years, in 20 years. So if we need to understand complexity, let's talk about other people. These three individuals, they are my children, and they are complex individuals. <laughs> they all have their friends, their schools, they go to different schools, they all have a different type of information. Every day, they change with new knowledge, new friends. They're fascinated by different things every day. And I don't know all these factors. I have no idea what these factors are. On the top of it, I have no idea if I have any impact on their life or on their future. This is why I think these kids, individuals, are complex individuals. And this is why I think health systems are complex systems. They are influenced by many, many factors we cannot control. They are influenced by many, many actors. And health systems change all the time. Health systems are embedded within other systems, politics, economy, security. In 2008, when in Wall Street, the price of oil increased, 
hospital managers in Ghana had to cut their medicine budget line to put fuel in their ambulances for emergency evacuations. Think about the impact of the Ebola outbreak on the affected countries in West Africa. Think about the impact of armed conflict. The war in Syria today on the delivery of health care in Syria, on health system in neighboring countries, Lebanon, Jordan, Turkey, and today Europe. Beyond these macro factors we cannot control, there are other factors we have to deal with on a daily basis. And these factors are more related to human beings because health systems are made and managed by human beings. So if we understand how people behave and how people make decisions, we will be able to understand and influence the way health systems function, how services are delivered. To understand decisions, we need to understand what affects these decisions their social network. Do you know why the regional director in Ghana never made the decision to affect, to reallocate the car to the second ophthalmologist? He could not assess whether the senior ophthalmologist had good connections at the Ministry of Health. And he did not want to take any risk for his career and offend the senior ophthalmologist. Social networks are dynamic, like health system. They change all the time. I give you an example. We're back to Ghana. This is the regional health system in Ghana in 2006. And I'm going to show you how it changed between 2006 and 2010. In blue, you can see the five hospital managers, five out of 20. And look at how the structure of the system is going to change and how the position of these of the, of the hospital managers is going to change. We go from a very dense structure to a very centralized network, a star shape, five branches, five districts. The hospital managers are not anymore at the center of the network. They used to be in a dense network where circulation of information was very dense, very quick, very rapid, and they could make quick decisions. Now, they only depend on the center. It's a huge risk for them. In 2010, they were unable to make the right decision in time, and the hospital suffered. So if social networks is not the right way of getting information, then we need to find other ways. We need to be able to supply every actor of the health system at each level of the health system with appropriate information so they can make decisions. And the good news is, today we can do it. Technology is here and available. We are currently developing a few mobile interactive applications with our colleagues of MAPAR in the US. And we help people to visualize their level of performance, what they do well and not well, their connections, and as well, they can compare their performance with the neighbors. This is a prototype we developed in Lima. And you can see that every person in the health system can now visualize what they do right and make the right decisions. And we can even identify the facilities in red, the ones in difficulty, the one that needs support. This is possible now. International development has focused a lot on resources and money. And 
they are needed. I mean, you agree with me. They are needed, especially in health systems where we work that are usually highly underfunded. But they are not sufficient. We have neglected the capacity of people to make decisions. Information, decisions, social networks. If we deliver these three elements and make these three elements live inside the health systems, people will be able to respond more quickly to the changing environment. It might be complex, but it is not complicated. Thank you.